Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Siegel, a urologist who practices out of Hackensack, New Jersey, and today I would like to speak about pelvic floor muscle exercises. Why? As a urologist, I deal with many men and women who would and can benefit from improving their muscle strength and tone of the pelvic floor, and I find myself repetitively and perpetually giving a talk on this subject, so I finally decided to try to make a video that would be a good comprehensive educational video on, on the subject. Pelvic floor muscles are part of our core muscles. And what are our core muscles? Our core muscles are the cylinder of muscles ar around our inner abdomen. Essentially, the, there are four main muscle groups. The diaphragm is the top of our core. The pelvic floor muscles form the bottom of our core. And the transverse abdominus muscles form the cylinder of the cord. And the, the back part is the erector spinae, the spinal muscles that travel up and down the spine. The uh, core muscles are referred to as the internal corset. That's a nice apt description. In Pilates, they refer to the core muscles as the powerhouse. Essentially, the core muscles are, are a missing link when it comes to fitness. They're not the glamour muscles. They can't be seen and they're often neglected at the expense of the uh, glamour muscles like our, our biceps and triceps and quadriceps muscles. Core strength is very evident in dancers, ballet dancers, other dancers, and practitioners of yoga and Pilates, and they're really important. Why? They're important for posture, they're important for balance, they support the back, they stabilize the spine, they keep the trunk stable while our limbs are active, and they enable all of us to put great effort into arm and leg movements. They create a platform, essentially, so that we can essentially function efficiently with our arms and legs. Now, getting to the pelvic floor muscles. I mentioned that the pelvic floor muscles are the bottom of the core muscles, the floor of the core muscles. This is a model of the human pelvis. And basically, the pelvic floor muscles are nothing other than the muscles that form the floor of the pelvis, that is, the bottom of the core muscle corset. Both men and women have these muscles, and essentially the muscles function to provide support to the urinary, the genital, and the intestinal tracts. And there are openings within these pelvic floor muscles that allow the urethra, the channel from the bladder, out the vagina and the rectum to pass through the pelvis to their external openings. And essentially these pelvic floor muscles become weakened under certain circumstances such as the aging process, obesity, and pregnancy. There are two layers of muscles that form the pelvic floor. The deep layer is known as the levator ani and the superficial layer is the perineal muscles. The pelvic floor muscles have several different functions, and I, I can summarize them with three S's. They have a supportive function, they have a sphincteric function, and they have a sexual function. So in terms of their support, the pelvic floor muscles essentially secure our, our pelvic organs in the proper position, as well as stabilize our core muscles. As far as their, their role in sphincteric function, the pelvic floor muscles are responsible for our ability to interrupt our urinary stream, help push out the last few drops of urine, tighten the vagina, and tighten the anal and rectal areas. Every time we cough, there is a reflex contraction of our pelvic floor muscles that helps to tighten things up and prevent urinary leakage, etc. In terms of sexual function, female sexual function, the pelvic floor muscles function to tighten the vagina. They help maintain clitoral erections they contract rhythmically at the time of orgasm. And in terms of male sexual function, the pelvic floor muscles help maintain a penile erection, they contract rhythmically at the time of orgasm, and they facilitate ejaculation by propelling semen through the urethra. In terms of assessing pelvic floor muscle strength, this is done via pelvic examination. The typical scenario is a female 
who suffers with either urinary incontinence, which is a condition in which there's an involuntary leakage of urine, or alternatively, a female who has pelvic relaxation, which essentially is weakened pelvic support, allowing downward descent of one or more of the pelvic organs through the vagina, such as a drop bladder, drop uterus, drop rectum, etc. So most of the time, assessment of pelvic floor muscle strength is done on females, although pelvic floor muscles are equally useful in both genders. Essentially, we grade pelvic floor muscle strength using the modified Oxford scale, which is essentially a scale ranging from zero to five. A zero response essentially is a complete lack of response. A grade one is a minor fluttering of the pelvic floor muscles. Grade two is weak muscle activity without a circular contraction or inward or upward movement of the vagina. Grade three response is a moderate contraction with inner and upward vaginal movement. And a grade four slash five response is a strong contraction with significant inner and upward vaginal movement. I'd like to take a few minutes and discuss some anatomy in order to really understand how these muscles work. Once again, this is a model of the pelvis. To go over some important bony landmarks, this is the pubic bone. This is the pubic arch. This and this is the ischial bone. This and this is the ilium. This is the sacrum. We can view it from down here as well. And the coccyx, our tailbone. This opening amidst the pubic bone is referred to as the obturator foramen. And internally, this landmark on each side, this spine, is known as the ischial spine. I would now like to review the inner layer of the pelvic floor muscles. So if we take a look at the pelvis, this is the floor of the pelvis, the pelvic floor muscles. The major inner muscle is referred to as the levator ani, literally in Latin to lift the anus because that is one of its functions. In the most uh, rear aspect of the uh, pelvic floor is the coccygeus muscle and then coming towards the front of the pubic bone is the iliococcygeus and the pubococcygeus muscle. The pubococcygeus uh, muscle is a very descriptive term since the muscle goes from the pubic bone in front to the coccyx in the back, the tailbone in the back. This is a rendition of the female pelvic floor muscles as viewed from the inside as if you are looking down at your own pelvis. So this is the pubic bone in front and the tailbone in back. And what we see here is the coccygeus muscle. This is the iliococcygeus muscle and the pubococcygeus muscle. And together this unit is known as the levator ani muscle. And as you can see there is an opening in the muscle for the urinary channel, the urethra, below that for the vagina, and below that for the rectum. And these muscle fibers actually travel around each of these structures. This is the identical pelvic floor muscles that we just saw a moment ago, but instead of being viewed from within the pelvis, they're viewed from below. So we are looking at the pubic bone on top, the tailbone on the bottom, and this is a view from below, what we call a perineal view. So what we see, once again, the coccygeus muscle, the iliococcygeus muscle, and the pubococcygeal muscle, the urethra, vagina, and the rectum, and all the muscle fibers of the pelvic floor muscles that surround the urinary channel, the vagina, and the rectum.